Hey guys, always wanted to get started in real estate, but don't quite know how to get started. When we first got into this game, I didn't know how to get started either. And I ended up making a lot of mistakes, but if I was gonna start today, I'm gonna tell you exactly how I would do it. For those of you that aren't familiar with house hacking, it's simply buying a house, condo, whatever, mobile home, doesn't matter, maybe even a yurt, and renting out rooms, or in the case of a yurt, renting out sleeping bags. You're going to find people that want to live communally, and it could be around a college, it could be just business people, it could be flight attendants, pilots, whatever, it doesn't matter, but you're gonna to wanna to find people that like to live in a roommate situation or can't afford an apartment on their own. Now, in our area, rooms are renting for a thousand to $1,200 a month, pretty high, but then again, our prices are pretty high too. So the best way to get started in house hacking is to buy the biggest house you can, then go through it and make as many rooms as you can out of all the extra space. Typically, when you rent a house out, let's say in our area, a four bedroom, a two bath house is gonna rent for about $4,000 a month. If you house hack that, let's say you partition off the dining room, partition off the living room, now you've got six bedrooms, you live in the garage, right? And now you've got six times, let's say even a thousand, now you're getting $2,000 a month more than you would if you had just rented it out to a family. Now, is that sustainable? Yeah, I suppose it is, but it's more of a starting way. So what I would do is I would rent that house out for a year or so, get, those ca get that cash flow going, and then I'd find another house and do the same thing and move into it and keep those rooms rented at the first one also. I would do that for a while until I could actually turn that first one into a full-time rental with one family because it's much easier to manage. And then I would start my proper portfolio of renting houses, then renting rooms. And that is a great way to get started because a lot of times in these higher priced areas, houses aren't going to cash flow, right? Because you can't, you can't rent them out for enough money to make them cash flow with today's prices. So house hacking is a great way to kind of get around that. It's kind of a cheat code for renting properties out. Now, I'll be honest with you, the first house I moved into when I was, I think, 20 years old was a house hack. It was um, a lady that had a house in Huntington Beach, California, and she rented out three of the bedrooms and lived in the fourth bedroom herself. And where there was constantly people there. There was never a time where their rooms were empty. And I didn't even think about that much until I got a little bit older and realized that I could do that myself. If you wanna get started in investing, getting a single family home loan is one of the easier loans to get, and house hacking is one of the easiest ways of making the payment on that property. So I strongly suggest you look into it. The second way I would use, and this is actually what I'm showing my kids now, my older boys, is buy a multi-unit property using one of the 5% down loan products that are out there. And there's a lot of them out there, guys. I'm not gonna give you one right now. Just suffice to say, there are plenty of them out there. And most of these loan products only require, it's a conventional loan, it's not FHA. So that means that you're not gonna have PMI insurance. And PMI insurance is quite expensive. That's basically insurance on your loan that says you're gonna make the payment on the loan because you're putting so little down. Um, FHA, which is another type of government-backed loan, always requires PMI. But a lot of these 5% down payment pro uh, programs don't require the PMI. So you wanna make sure when you talk to your lender to see if they've got a product like that with no PMI. Very important that you remember that because that's gonna boost your house payment up quite a bit. The next thing I think you should do is go out and find at least a triplex if you can. A duplex is okay, but you can get up to a fourplex with these 5% loan products. Anything above that goes into what we call commercial loans, and you're gonna have to put right around 30% down on those. You can get away with some lower down payments on some of those commercial properties, but for the most part, figure 30%. That's why we are so adamant about learning how to raise private money while you're doing all of these other things so that you can get into those larger uh, unit mixes. You wanna buy a 16 unit, you can't do it for 5% down, but you can raise private money for the 30% down and then get a 70% loan. It's a great way to do it and it's the way my wife and I have been doing it for 15 years now. What you do is you'll buy, let's say you, let's say you buy a fourplex because that is the max you can get on these types of loans generally and you rent out 
three units and live in one yourself. Even better, what I would do is, especially if I'm single or if I'm married with no kids, I would literally rent out all three units and then I would rent out, if it's a two bedroom, one bath that you're gonna live in, I would literally rent out one of those bedrooms too. That way I would be assured that my house payment was made, I would have no money out of pocket or very little, and I would be able to save more money, right? Save more money for my next 5% down payment on my next property, or 10% or 20% or whatever the case may be. This is probably, if you can swing that, is probably the best way to build faster wealth. Multi-units, in my opinion, uh, are much better than single family homes just because it's, it, if anybody ever moves out of one unit, you've still got, say, three rented. Whereas once you turn that house into a full-time rental for one tenant, if they move out, then that house is empty. It's automatically now not bringing in any income. So multi-units in my book are a far better, uh, a far better investment. The other thing you can do too on these multifamilies is figure out storage, figure out garages, even parking spaces. You can rent out all of these things extra to other people. A lot of times in our area, we don't have garages, we just have parking spaces. So if you've got a garage, maybe you'll rent that garage out to a contractor that's gonna store materials in there for $500 a month or $400 a month, whatever the case may be. And the tenants can park in the parking lot. Uh, if, if they're not expecting a garage or they don't need a garage, great. You know, you can make more money with that. Uh, another way to do it too is if there's room on the property is to put up storage sheds individually and rent those out individually for storage for each tenant. That's a great way to bring in money. So lots of different income options on multi-units. So those guys are two different ways for you to get started. Yes, it does require money up front, but as you get better, as you move along in your investment journey, hopefully, if you listen to what I say, uh, you'll start figuring out how to raise private money. So I'm gonna post another video down below that's gonna show you how to get started raising private money. Super important that you watch that one because that is the thing that catapulted me from mobile home investing to single family home to apartment investing within a year and a half. And if I hadn't done that, uh, it would have taken me much, much longer to establish my foothold, foothold in multifamily. So I want you to watch the video on that. And I also want you to watch that video on house hacking, on how to actually lay out a house and make more cash flow out of each house that you have. All right, guys. So to wrap this up, if you want to get started right now and you want to live for free, those are the two best ways that I can think of to do it. Is it going to require a little bit of work? Of course it is because you're going to be managing these yourself for the first couple of years. After that though, once you get your portfolio going, going just like I did, hopefully you'll be able to hire a property manager to let them do most of the heavy lifting while you're out looking for new properties and establishing more cash flow and more residual income for the rest of your life, guys. Hey, look, I want you all to win. So please, please quit analyzing everything and take action. Guys, if, it, if you don't have the skills, you know, we've got, we've got some education. There's a link down below for that. But for the most part, guys, all you've got to do is just jump in the water. Don't stick your toe in, jump all the way in and get started. Get that first property and then keep moving on until you can quit that stupid job that you hate so much or move to a different job that you love, but you don't have to worry about the money that it generates because you've got so much money coming in from your rental properties. Guys, I hope you have a great day. I appreciate every single one of you. Again, like the video, subscribe to my channel, and sign up for notifications so that you can catch every single video we drop. I appreciate you, and I'll see you next time.